Before we break for a cup of tea and some refreshments, I just want to call your attention to the Word of God and some thoughts that uh, filled my mind even today. I was thinking, indeed yesterday I came across an article by a, a man the name of Thomas Guy. Thomas Guy was a, a London miser in the 1700s. He was very eccentric, lived in poverty. He ate dried bread. He dressed in the same clothes. He, he, he sat in the dark rather than light a candle. Eccentric, a recluse. And some people called him a fool. But whenever Thomas Guy died, he left a fortune. A fortune of money that went to build the famous world-renowned Guy's Hospital in London. And also, the ring road round that particular hospital is named after him. Outward appearances can be deceptive. Man looketh on the outward appearance and God looketh on the heart. There's a verse in Scripture in Proverbs that says, God says, My son, give me thine heart. And God's after the heart of man because the heart is deceitful and above all things desperately wicked. Out of the heart proceeds all the evil and sin and wickedness. But my dear friend, God says, Give me thine heart, not your hands. Not your hands. You see, we want to work our way to heaven, but not the labors of our hands. Our labors of our hand cannot meet the law's demands. Our hands cannot work us into heaven. We can't get to heaven. Isaiah says they cover themselves with works. And if you're trying to work your way into heaven, my dear friend, you cannot do it. It's impossible. It's by grace are we saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Last week I preached here on men that had something, all men that had something in, in, in similar, and that was nothing. I preached on Lazarus. Lazarus could feel nothing, he was dead. I preached on the man, on the men that uh, couldn't pay the creditor. Uh, they, 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 they couldn't pay anything. They could pay nothing. And I tell you, my friend, listen, there's a man too that could do nothing. And that man was hang, hanging on the old cross beside our Lord Jesus Christ. He couldn't work. He hadn't, been, he hadn't been to communion. He hadn't been baptized. But he cried on the Lord from that cross. And Jesus said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. It's not our hands that he wants with all our works. And it's not our head with all our brains. You know, if education could bring salvation, nearly everybody would be saved. We're living in a day of great education. We're living in a day of great seeking after degrees and higher education. But education cannot save your soul. It's regeneration. One of the greatest and most educated men in the Bible was a man the name of Nicodemus. He was the leader of the Jews. He was a Pharisee. He knew the 613 prohibitions of the Jewish law off by heart. He taught the Jewish Torah. He knew everything inside out. And Jesus said to him, one day you must be born again. And he couldn't understand it. Professing himself to be wise, he was a fool. He said, how can a man come the second time out of his mother's womb? We're not talking about physical birth. We're talking about spiritual birth. Jesus says, ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. Someone said to George Whitfield one time years ago, why do you always preach on, ye must be born again? Every time you preach almost, you say, ye must be born again. Well, he says, I preach it simply because ye must be born again. Jesus says ye must. Ye must. If you're going into heaven, 
you must be born again. If you're not, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. It's not your head with all your knowledge. Nicodemus proves that. And then when you turn over to John's Gospel, chapter 4, you have another woman, and she was educated. She knew plenty because she knew that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. She knew about Jacob's well. She knew Old Testament history, but she was a harlot. The Bible says that she had five husbands, and she came to the well there to meet the Lord Jesus Christ and had an encounter with him there. And she got saved, born again, and went back down into Samaria and told the people, come see a man that told me all things that ever I did. My dear friend, it doesn't matter about her head knowledge, it's her heart. What about your heart tonight? You see, we're born in sin and shaping in iniquity. In sin did our mothers conceive us. There is no hope unless Jesus Christ comes and cleanses our heart. That's what he wants is our heart. Why he wants it? Because there's no one else can do anything with it. The world's in a state tonight. It's in a mess tonight. Murder and mayhem and, and all sorts of evil and wickedness is around us. There's only one cure, my friend, for this world. And that's a new heart. You need a new heart. That individual needs a heart change. You need to be born again. You need the Spirit of the Lord to come into your life. You need those old things to pass away. Jesus came to die on the cross. That's what he wants. He wants your heart. Why he wants it? Because he can cleanse it. The blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. That's the text of Scripture I got saved through 45 years ago on a Monday morning. The blood of Jesus Christ. God's Son cleanseth us from all sin. My dear friend, you can be cleansed from your sin and your heart can be clean and you can have a new heart and you can follow the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he wants. That's why he wants it. When does he want it? He wants it now. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they're red as crimson, they shall be as wool. He wants your heart now. He wants it before the coronary gets it. He wants it before the hemorrhage gets it. He wants it, my dear friend, before the stroke gets it. He wants your heart. He wants your life. He wants your all. He died for you. He died to me. He died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Christ died for the ungodly. Christ Jesus came in to the world to save sinners. There he hung, bleeding, dying, the Son of God, the creator of all things, who became a man and went on to that old cross between the thieves and cried there on that cry and said, the, one of the last cries he cried was, it's finished. Redemption's price was paid and the way back to God was opened up. Jesus Christ, my, the Jesus Christ, came down. Jesus Christ looked down. He came down. He, he, he came to the, to, the, to, to the cross at Calvary and he rose again on the third day and he lives forever. And he's our Savior, my Savior. He can be your Savior tonight. My son, maybe there's a young man listening to me tonight. Maybe you're in drugs. Maybe you're in drink. Maybe you're in, you're in turmoil. And you don't know what way to, 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 to turn. Well, this message is for you tonight. My son, give me thine heart. Give me your life. Give me your all tonight. Come and put all on the altar to him tonight. Come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. He's inviting you to come. Come, for all things are now ready. Seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. He'll save you, he'll keep you, and he'll bless you. God looketh on the heart and he knows your heart tonight and my heart tonight and he wants to cleanse it and save it and set it free and I trust that you will come. Father, we give you thanks for the word of God that has went forth already here. We thank you for the messages and songs. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless these refreshments to your use, for we ask, them, ask it in the Savior's name and for his sake. Amen.